Hi, I'm Philip. I'm from 20 Squares, and I will talk about the FRP 26 and FRP 27 that we worked on the beginning of last year. Before I go into the details on these FRPs themselves, I'll briefly mention something that is underlying both, namely compositional game theory. This is a tool we use internally, and it's used for implementing both 26 and 27. What is compositional game theory? It's a new mathematical language for reasoning about games. The key feature is that you can build games in a distributed way. So instead of building one block as one game, you can divide things up into pieces. You have one game and another game, and then you have systematic ways of putting these games together. Underlying is an atomic unit. This is depicted here in this diagram. It's basically a bidirectional process. So on the left-hand side is the past, on the right is the future. There's some information coming from the past. This is basically X. Then you output some information into the environment. This is Y. And you get a result back R from the future and reason about and possibly also send information back into the past. OK, what you have, if you have a basic game or if you have several games, you can compose them in two ways sequentially. So game G happens first, then game H happens second, and then they can be composed into one or in parallel. So you have game G1 and game G2. They happen both simultaneously, and you can basically plug them together as happening um, at the same time. You can use this stuff. The formal language is implemented in Haskell as a DSL. It's open source and freely available. Um, and it's used for internally, basically, for mass 20 squares, for staking protocols, token design, and all kinds of applications in and also outside of crypto. All right, what does it have to do with the FRP? Well, first of all, as you can see here in the title of the first one, 26, Credible Commitments via Open Games, it was exactly actually part of modeling the credible commitments using this framework. Okay, what are credible commitments? What is this about? This is, by the way, it was inspired and prompted by work by Hin on how credible commitments in games change the equilibrium. A classical example is a prison dilemma, where normally both players have an incentive to deviate. Um, once you have credible commitments, you can shift the equilibrium to the cooperative, cooperative outcome so that both players have an incentive to cooperate. Um, there is a key issue, namely, what if commitments are used strategically by players. Um, for instance, think about, in the case of the prisoner dilemma, think about a third player, a coordinator, and you introduce it. That player, if he has the capabilities of using credible commitments, can put um, commitments in place that will incentivize the players of the PD to play cooperatively, but at the same time, he will extract all the value. What is more, once you make that first step, then it's pretty evident that you can also ask the question, what is if one of these players actually can be the coordinator? So do they have an incentive to change the structure of the game and move first, put credible commitments in place, and then basically profit from it? What we did in the FRP, basically, is taking these ideas and modeling them using the, the Open Games framework. Why do we do this? I mentioned before that the key feature is this compositionality. You can have one building block and another building block, and then you has, have ways of composing it and rearranging it. We do this um, specifically starting with different scenarios, including the prisoner dilemma. So starting with the simple example I gave before, introducing a coordinator, making one of the players a coordinator, and basically going through um, several steps of seeing how commitments actually affect the outcomes. Now, given that looking at the prisoner dilemma is a nice um, exercise, but it's not obviously what we mostly care about in crypto. We also provide a simplified model of an AMM where we show how commitments basically affect choices. And of course, why do we do this? Well, because these kind of commitments and the resulting changes on behavior as well as on welfare are an example of what MEV um, can have as effects in the system. FRP 27 goes in a different direction. This is also using open games as a tool, but it's focused on the question of auction simulations under proposal builder separation. OK, so first some background. PBS obviously has resulted in a very complex vertical market structure. There are many players, users, searchers, builders, relays, then there's MathBoost, many interacting components. Obviously, these components are also changing. It's not static. Many new um, players come into the market um, of our new services. So it's an ever-evolving landscape. 
FRP27 now looks at the effect of different allocation mechanisms and how this interacts with the vertical relationship. The model that we use, it's a very simplified model, um, basically looks at the relay with different builders, and these builders might run auctions themselves, getting basically um, transactions from searchers respectively from users. And the idea is once you have this vertical structure, how does this affect the overall allocation? The main comparison that we do, or the main analysis that we do, is a comparison between the status quo. Keep in mind, that is now over one year ago. Um, so the status quo basically being a relay that just runs more or less a first price, um, first, first price auction. And then what effect on users will the different mechanisms that the builders use have? Yeah, for instance, what happens if one runs a second price auction one runs a dynamic auction. What happens if one of them, you know, if the auctions are different? And in some sense, this is obvious, but it's helpful to spell it out explicitly and see it in action. Is that naturally the rational users who are basically interacting with the builders, they need to think about what will actually happen for their transactions on a higher level. So there is basically more involved reasoning. And it's clear that the, depending on the kind of auction you run, this kind of logic has some has dramatic effects. For instance, in the case of, for, of first price auctions, clearly you have to think about as more bidders being involved than just the one you locally face. Or you have to think about in a second price auction that if in the end the relay is using just a classical first price auction, that your own bidding must be affected by that and you will deviate from what is normally the dominant strategy in a second price auction. Why is it relevant? Again, it's interesting to understand the different incentives and specifically across the vertical, how the, the, the inclusion of specific mechanisms actually affects the strategies of the players. I think one, one other thing that I want to mention in, towards the end of the presentation is the FRPs are obviously relatively small in scope and self-contained, but still, for us at least, um, specifically FRP 20, 27 had a kind of long, longer lasting effect because what we started as work there, what we delivered basically was then taken up by us um, and it's something we have been working on basically afterwards. Um, and I think this is actually, you know, it's a useful sign of the program itself. So let me very, very briefly talk about that to see where this has basically developed into now. So I mentioned before that the model we had was very simplified. There was basically one, um, one relay and two builders and then some users submitting it. When we worked on that, we realized actually there's some interesting pattern there, namely that specifically the builders in the middle are essentially participating as in, in two ways. They are possibly allocating and running an auction themselves, getting basically order flow from below, but then they're also participating um, upstream level in the relay, what is basically the auction or the auction the mechanism of the relay. Now, when thinking about this and you know coding it up in our system, we realize there is a nice there is a nice structure that we can make very general and reuse. And this is basically what you see here. I don't you know this is, looks complicated, but I will make it very simple. In essence, what we are imagining or what we wanted to model is a kind of a template agent that can be at each time be both auctioneer as well as participant in an auction. And this is, as you can see, there are inputs going in, outputs, returns, and internally there's a payoff structure, evaluation for the goods that you are participating in, and also auction parameters that you determine yeah, what auction you run. Now, this is a less simplified model. So if you think about this, Basically, in the middle is the component or is a version of the component I showed before. There are a couple of builders, they are interacting. Um, but now we have more components. On the left, for instance, we have users who are, who are basically submitting possibly to different builders. On the right-hand side, we have the proposer who's choosing. And then we have user one and user two again because they are evaluating and see what actually gets through as transactions. And the key thing is that you can see all of these components are localized and are interacting only through these interfaces that are boxed and numbered. One, two, and three, four. Each again is a template. So you can have basically this um, structure where one large game represents actually internally more complicated interactions. How is this useful? You can analyze, first of all, you can set up quite quickly different models of what players are actually there, what they're doing. And then you can, for instance, analyze the, the strategies of players, what some action, what transaction do they actually submit? Do they submit to all relays? Do they focus um, on specific relays? What happens if the relays specialize? Yeah. If they run specific mechanisms different than others, 
what if they are censoring or not. Then there is the question, obviously, how do, if there are different allocation mechanisms happening at the same time, how they are actually interacting. All of that can be analyzed in that form. So in short, I think what started as a relatively simplified model and was, you know, thankfully funded through the FRP is still something that we're working on and is still basically around. Thank you very much. The links to the repos are here. Contact is there. If you have questions, let me know.